Chapter 2. Shoes and News. A couple of days before school started, we went to Harry's, the shoe store on Broadway. When we, he was three, Fudge only wanted to wear the same shoes as me. Now he has his own ideas, but this time he couldn't decide between black with silver trim or white and blue between lace-ups, lace velcro closings or pull-ons, between high tops or low. I'll just get two pairs, he told Mom. Maybe three. He licked his yellow lollipop, which he begged for her for before the salesman had ever had even measured his feet. You need one pair of shoes and one pair of winter boots, Mom said, checking her list. And unless you get going, we won't have time to get your winter boots today. There was at least a dozen open shoe boxes in front of Fudge, and the salesman, his name Badge, said Mitch McCall kept checking his watch like he was already late for some important appointment. Tuzzy sat in her stroller, kicking her feet, or maybe she was admiring her new shoes. Finally, I said to Fudge, why don't you just get the same shoes as me? No thanks, Pete, Fudge said. Your new shoes aren't that cool. What do you mean, I asked, looking down at my feet. I mean, cool, Pete. What's not cool about them? Nothing's cool about them. Could be he be right, I wondered. Did I choose too fast just to be done with it? I do that sometimes. I can't help myself. I hate to chop. But are these shoes really that bad? Bad enough so the kids at school will laugh and say, nice shoes, Hatcher. Where'd you find them? In the trash? Should I try on another pair? Should I wait to see what Fudge chooses? And then, wait a minute, I told myself. I can't believe I'm thinking this way, as if my five-year-old brother knows more about cool than me. Since when is he the ex expert on cool? Since when is he the expert on anything? Make up your mind, Mom told Fudge. I can't, Fudge said. He was wearing one style on his right foot and another on his left. I have to have them both. I'll count to twenty, Mom said, while you decide. I'm not deciding, Fudge told her. You want me to decide for you, Mom asked? No. Tootsie mimicked him. No. Then she grabbed the yellow lollipop out of Fudge's hand and threw it. It hit Mitch McCall in the head, stuck in his hair, and hung there like an or ornament on a Christmas tree. Tootsie, Mom cried. That wasn't polite. But Tootsie laughed and clapped her sticky little hands. Anyway, Mitch McCall grimaced as he pulled the lollipop off his head. It took some hairs with it, which really seemed to upset him, probably because he was already kind of bald on top. I'm so sorry, Mom said, handing him a wet wipe from her bag. Maybe you could prefer an another salesperson, Mitch McCall said, through the through teeth so tightly clenched his mouth hardly opened at all. No, Mom said, said, you've been very helpful. All right, then, Mitch McCall said, kneeling in front of Fudge. Let's get this over with. Make up your mind, son. There's an our other customers waiting. I'm not your son, Fudge told him. That's just a figure of speech, Mom explained quietly. A what? Fudge asked. Never mind. I could tell Mom was losing patience, too. Just choose your... Choose, Fudge. Fudge pulled a couple of Fudge bucks out of his pocket. He handed them to Mitch McCall. What's this, Mitch asked. Money, Fudge said. Enough for two pairs of shoes. We don't take play money. It's not play money, Fudge told him. It's from the bank. Bank, Mitch McCall said. What bank? The Farley Drex Drexel Hatcher Bank. I was surprised to hear Fudge use this whole his whole name. Usually he throws a fit when someone tries to call him Farley Drexel Instead of fudge. It's a big bank, he continued. It has zillions and trillions of fudge bucks. Mitch McCall turned to Mom. Harry's, Harry's only accepts U.S. currency and valued, valid credit cards. Mom dug her wallet out of her purse, and I have my credit card right here, she said, handing it to Mitch McCall. We'll take the black lace-ups with silver trim for fudge and come back for his winter boots when you're less crowded. Make it on a Wednesday, Mitch McCall said. Then he muttered under his breath, that's my day off. But Mom, Fudge shouted. That's it, Fudge, Mom said. We're done shopping for shoes. No fair, Fudge cried. No fay. Tootsie cried as if she were Uncle Feather repeating every word Fudge said. Let's go, Mom said. I'm not going without all my shoes, Fudge said. He folded his arms across his chest and burrowed deeper into the chair. Uh-oh, I thought, slowly backing away and out of the store. This isn't looking good. Outside, I pretended to check out the window displays, but I could see Mom trying to pull Fudge off his chair. When that didn't work, she tried to drag him by his feet. When that didn't work, she gave up, went to the register, picked up her bags, and pushed Tootsie's stroller toward the door. She was probably thinking Fudge would follow, but she was wrong. Suddenly, he was rolling through the store like a tornado, destroying everything in his path. High heels flew off display table, baby shoes toppled from the shelves, men's boots, bo boots thumped to the floor. Mom chased Fudge, and Mitch McCall chased Mom. As a rotating sack display crashed, Tootsie jumped up and down her in her stroller, shrinking as if her nutcase of a brother was putting on the best show to hit Broadway in years. I prayed no one from my class was at the store. No one who know, knows me or has ever known me. No one I might meet someday who would say, oh yeah, you're the kid with that weird brother who threw the fit at Harry's.
I backed away from the store windows and headed down the street, pretending I was just another guy strolling down Broadway. A guy from a perfectly normal family. I checked out the menu of the sushi restaurant two doors down from Harry's, browsed at the used book table, and flipped through magazines at the newsstand on the corner. Then I heard Mom calling my name. Peter, I could use some help here. She was carrying Tootsie in one arm, struggling with the shopping bags in the other, and still trying to push the stroller, which now held my screaming brother. You're too old for tantrums, I shouted. If Mom didn't love you, you you'd have a tantrum, he cried. This has nothing to do with love, Mom said, passing Tootsie to me, then trying to get Fudge out of the stroller. Yes, it does, Fudge, cried. If you really loved me, you would have bought me both pairs of shoes.